Uh, the second awardee is Professor Narayanan Jairaman. May I request Professor Jairaman to come on the dais, please. May I request Professor Sarkar to greet, greet Dr. Jayaraman with the shawl. <laughs> May I request Sri, Sri Krishna Kulkarniji, Chairman BOG, to hand over the Distinguished Alumnus Award and the Citation Scroll to Dr. Jayaraman. May I request Professor Karnika Baines to come on stage and read the citation for Dr. Jairavan. Good evening, everyone. We take immense pleasure in honoring Dr. Narayanan Jayaraman, an alumnus of the 11th batch of IIM Calcutta, for his exceptional contributions to the field of academia through teaching and research. Dr. Jayaraman is the Williams Wells Fargo Professor of Finance at the Scheller College of Business, Georgia Institute of Technology. He received his PhD from the Katz Graduate School of Business of the University of Pittsburgh and his CFA qualification in 2004. His research interests include corporate governance, mergers and acquisitions, corporate bankruptcy, option and equity market linkages, and entrepreneurial finance. Before commencing his academic career, Dr. Jay Raman worked for five years for Premier Automobiles Limited, Mumbai. He is listed in the top four percentile in most prolific authors in finance literature, 1959 to 2008. His research has been cited in major press publications, including the Wall Street Journal, the New York Times, Washington Post, Atlanta Journal and Constitution, Chicago Tribune, Money Magazine, and TheStreet.com. His research papers won the Best Paper Award at the India Finance Conferences in 2018 and 19. He has taught 10,000 students over the years and won several teaching awards, including Brady Family Award, for Faculty Teaching Excellence, Institute Junior Faculty Teaching Excellence Award, Rose Stamps, Excellence in Teaching Award, Lilly Teaching Fellowship Award, Core Professor of the Year Award in the MBA program, and the Professor of the Year in the EMBA MOT program. He was inducted into Georgia Tech Teaching Hall of Fame in 2014. Dr. Jay Raman has led executive education seminars in the U.S. and has consulted and taught executive education seminars for several companies including Delta Airlines, Scientific Atlanta, Lockheed Corporation, and Home Depot. He is the recipient of Georgia Tech Outstanding Service Award in recognition of his conscientious professional service and dedicated support to Georgia Tech. He is also the recipient of the 2020 Ernest Scheller Jr. Award, recognizing a faculty or staff member who aspires to service excellence and acts as an outstanding role model. He is fond of Carnatic and Bollywood music. He represented IMC in soccer, volleyball, and basketball. He is married to Geeta for over 40 years. Geeta is an accomplished professional and has provided steadfast support to his professional success over the years. We acknowledge Dr. Jay Raman's significant achievements as a scholar with enormous pride and bestow upon him the Institute's highest honor for its alumni, the Distinguished Alumnus Award, given this 14th day of November 2023. May I request Dr. Jayaraman to kindly share a few words.
First, I want to say that it's hard act to follow Subir, but I'm going to try. And thank you, everyone. This is a memorable day for me to receive this award. So, dear chief guests, the distinguished chairman of Board of Governors, the dean of the college, and the dean of alumni relations. Uh, I want to start off by saying that, as all of you know, these kind of achievements is not by, done by one person. There really needs to be a family of support behind it. So I want to take this time to acknowledge all the people who have supported me throughout my journey. My parents, of course, are probably watching from heaven, enjoying this uh, ceremony. Already, I have, um, the commendations sort of told you about Geeta, my wife of 43 years, and there's no question that without her support, I, I would not be standing in front of you talking about this. I, of course, have a great family of two daughters and son-in-law, and they also have been very, very supportive. Um, the professor's names, as you saw, I'm probably one of the oldest recipients here. Probably many of them are not uh, alive anymore. I did not check, but I want to give a sincere thanks to Professor Sarkar, Gaurango Chattabhadya, Krishna Swaminathan, Bani Sinha, and so many more, Ramu Ayer, those names that come back to me. And all those teachers have helped me along the, this path. I also want to acknowledge, I was surprised to learn that these days we have 485 students, but my batch was of 100 students, and uh, to this day we still keep in touch on a monthly Zoom call, and we are all over the world, and we are a very, very close-knit family. It's not surprising that I'm the third recipient from my batch of this Distinguished Award, uh, I was preceded by Indra Nui and uh, Paul Srivatsava, so I am joining an excellent company to be recognized in this fashion. Uh, now, I want to say a few words about my life at IIM, and then I switch. I'm going to focus on primarily the students, my advice, as they pursue their career path. That's how I thought of my presentation. So in terms of my experience at IIM Calcutta, it may come as a surprise to you that we are the only batch which occupied two different campuses. In the first year, 74, 75, we were at the Barakpur Trunk Road campus, Northern Calcutta. That had its own charms, definitely it had its lakes, and then in the second year, we moved to this beautiful campus. Of course, the campus has changed very significantly, but it has not lost its beauty in terms of lakes, and uh, I still uh, fondly remember the memories of H1, H2, H3, H4. Now they are called Tagore Hall, probably small set of accommodation for thousands of students here. Uh, since I played a lot of soccer and I also captained the team here, I just want to relate an incident, not directly related to IIM Calcutta, but uh, soccer mania, at least that used to exist in Kolkata in those years. You know, my friend and I decided to go and watch a soccer game between East Bengal and Mohammedan Sporting at uh, then called uh, I don't think it was called ne Netaji Stadium at that time, might have been. It was Eden Gardens. So first of all, we didn't know how to get the tickets in the black market. Then somebody came and told us that, you just say, I've got two tickets, then somebody who has two tickets will come and give you the tickets. And we did that, we got the tickets. Then we sat as spectators, and uh, lo and behold, Mohammedan Sporting scored the first goal. And there were small number of people in our area who were Mohammedan sporting supporters. They were euphoric. They were jumping with joy. And uh, 
Then after 10 or so minutes, the East Bengal scored. And then you should see the commotion. The East Bengal supporters, vast many of them, really uh, were having some sort of a fight with the Mohammedan sporting uh, spectators, supporters. Anyway, the game didn't finish, as you can imagine. So we all take the exit. And those days, there was mini bus. And we wanted to get a mini bus to Thakur Pukur. And guess what? In a mini bus of 12 people, there were 20 people, some sitting on the front and some sitting on the top. <coughs> and the mini bus driver straight drove the mini bus to Kidapur police station. He said, OK, I'm going to hand over to the police. The police person came and said, whoever wants to pay the money can pay and leave. My friend and my friend Harish and I just took the opportunity, paid and came scrambling to get the bus and back to the campus. So that was the passion for soccer. Unfortunately, probably these days, it's more gone towards cricket and maybe many of you are planning to watch the game tomorrow, but that was uh, Calcutta in 74, 76. Now, switching gears, I thought, what's the best way to frame my, you can call it advice, to the mostly students. And uh, one of the famous politicians in US, his name is Newt Gingrich, and he gave a long talk, 45 minutes in our commencement. Then he told the people, you're not going to remember anything I said over the past 45 minutes, but I want to leave you with these eight words. I'm going to elaborate a little bit on those eight words for success. The first two are dream big. Third and fourth are work hard. Fifth and sixth are learn constantly. And seventh and eighth are enjoy life. So dream big, really I believe in it. You can be, especially the students in the audience, you can be what you want to be. You saw that uh, some of the distinguished alumni are CEOs, or accomplished professors, or successful politicians, or government officials. So basically, if you put your mind to it, nothing to stop. You have to work towards it every single day. Work hard, easier said than um, done, and uh, um, the best way I want to start out that is if you look at, uh, I'm from the US, I'm a US citizen. When I look at my president, Joe Biden, he has never accepted failure, right? Those of you who are familiar with the history, he ran for presidency in 1988. He didn't get the nomination. He ran again in 2008. He did not get it. 2020 was his year. Of course, he is 80 years old, but he still pursued, persisted, and he's even going to run for the second time. And you can imagine how much of a passion and a dreamer he is to get to where he is. So never, never, never give up. Uh, so I published a lot of articles, and those of you not familiar with the academic processing, it takes um, roughly three to four years from the conception of the idea to the publication. In the process, you're going to get so many times rejected by your peer reviewers. So every time you get a rejection, you have to take that rejection to heart and try to fix the problems the referee is saying and address it and hopefully place it in a good journal. One of my most cited papers is uh, Culture and uh, Success of Mergers and Acquisitions. And we were one of the first ones to bring up the concept of uh, off-state measure of culture from international business to finance. We had a very, very hard time convincing our top journals in the field. So we ultimately send it to the top journal in international business. And uh, 
it's been cited so many, so many times. So we never gave up on the fact that a couple of our top journals rejected it and just persisted with that. Then coming to five and six, learn constantly. I cannot emphasize enough uh, that point. You may not believe it, I'm in my quote unquote the eighth decade of my life. So uh, obviously I've learned a lot over the years. But if you are in the academic field of uh, finance or any field, you have to keep up with things that are changing, right? So machine learning, artificial intelligence, those are the big things now. So what, did, what do I do? When a new colleague joins and offers the latest econometric methodology to address finance questions, I go there, sit as a student, learn it, and try to use it for my research. So learning absolutely never stops. So you may think come April you're graduating and going on to the real world and your dream job, but you have to be consistently focused on acquiring additional skills. And the last two are, of course, enjoy life. Easier said than done. I always fall short on that, but uh, it's important because we all have one life to lead, to take upon ourselves, to enjoy every single uh, good things that happens in your life. I do have what is called a jar of awesome in my home. So anytime significant nice thing happens to me or my family, I write a note and put it in the jar. So at some date in future, I'll come, go open it and see what are the things I wrote. Of course, to enjoy life, you have to maintain uh, good physical health, good financial health, and good emotional health. Unless you have all those three, financial, physical, and emotional health in balance, it's very hard to enjoy life. So all in all, these are my thoughts. I hope I didn't take it too long. And once again, I want to thank the institutions and all those committee members who thought that I was deserving of this award. And I'm happy to be in front of you and sharing my few thoughts. Thank you.